Hi, this is Bastian, and today we're going to take a look at the game I played using the Gusev Counter Gambit, which is a variation of the Austrian defense. And this opening is uh, historically unpopular with a rating of 0% for the last 24 years. So, of course, I have to try it. And the opening starts out with d4, d5, c4 c5 signaling the austrian defense and now pawn takes pawn and the knight develops so let's take a look at the game i played so the game starts out with d4 d5 c4 c5 the austrian defense now Pawn takes pawn, and we develop the knight to f6, signaling the Gusev counter gambit. White grabs the pawn, and I continue development with pawn to e6. White continues with pawn takes pawn, and this is typical when playing a lower rated opponent who has a pawn advantage in the opening. He wants to trade off uh, pieces as quickly as possible and hope to have a winning endgame with uh, a pawn advantage. So I trade off the queens. And now it's time to recapture um, one of the pawns. So the best way to do this is bishop takes. But instead I play the less obvious pawn recapture. And with this, I'm willing to play with an isolated pawn on the e-file, but it does give me the option to fianchetto later in the game with uh, bishop to uh, b7. White continues with b4, trying to protect his pawn on c5 from getting captured. So all of White's developments uh, must now take place in order to uh, preserve his pawns. So that's his main goal now in the game. I play knight to c6 to undermine the defender. a4 would have also worked. White continues to defend. a4. b5. Knight to a d4, so we can see that both pawns are now under attack. White plays c6. I recapture the pawn. Pawn recaptures and bishop recaptures. So I follow my goal in shattering the bishop, uh, attacking g2, which may or may not come in handy later in the game. And I have two attackers on the pawn on a3. So at this point, black has some good development, but he's still down a pawn. White continues with bishop to b2. Obviously, he wants to continue trading material, which I can no longer allow. So knight to e4. Threatening the weak pawn on f2 and threatening a fork. And there are two ways for uh, white to defend against it. White plays king to e1. So the other defense would have been the awkward development knight to h3, protecting the pawn, which wasn't played. So we're seeing king to e1. And now we come to the most important part of the game. Black has several options to continue his development, which are all worth considering. He can play rook to d8, which locks in the king. Black could play bishop to c5, adding pressure to a um, f2 pawn. Black could also try Rook to b8, rook to the open file with two minor pieces ready to be attacked. Or black can simply castle. 
but I'm spotting a tactic here, and this tactic will only work with the following move, and that is the development of the rook to c8. And this doesn't seem like the most interesting move, because we still give white the option to flee, so the king is not locked in, but we do threaten a checkmate with rook to uh, c1 which is not possible for the moment, because white is defending that square. But at this point, white is in a lot of trouble. Perhaps the best move, which is still losing, would be e3 to create an escape square for um, the king. But instead, black plays f3, attacking the knight and also creating an escape square on uh, f2. And now for white, the drama happens, because he didn't spot uh, my attack, because I simply crashed through with knight takes pawn on a3. And for this to work, we have to be ready for all of white's defenses. He can recapture the knight, he rec can recapture the knight on a3 with the bishop, or with his knight, or with the rook. So, as the game continues, we're going to take a look at all of these defenses later and see why they won't work. White continues with knight takes uh, knight, still protecting against the checkmate threat. So I play bishop to uh, b4. So there's only one escape for the king after the check. King to d1. And now knight to f2 checkmate in only 60 moves. So why did white's defenses fail? Let's take a look at them. So let's take a look at one of White's defenses. Pawn takes knight on e4. If pawn takes knight was played, we can simply continue with knight to a c2. Check with a fork. which leads either to king to d1, bishop to d4, and now with random move is played, say h3, we can see the danger of the checkmate with knight to e3 checkmate. So white must play on the defense, knight to d2, in order to prevent the checkmate. Knight to e3 check, king to e1 forced, and I can simply castle, and I can get the checkmate after rook takes bishop on f1. So if a random move is played, say h3, rook takes bishop uh, mate. So a random move can be played, white must again find a defensive move. Knight g to f3, after which I can continue to check with a fork. King to d1, I can grab the rook, bishop recaptures, bishop to a3, and now once again I'm threatening checkmates with rook to c1. So if a random move is played, again it's game over for white. White must once again find a defensive move, and he must play the awkward knight to b3 in order to prevent the c1 square. But the knight can be kicked away easily after a3. Knight to d2 to protect the knight. I can grab a free knight. Knight can recapture. And now, 
bishop to e4, threatening a fort between the king and the knight. So if the king moves to get out of that fort, bishop to b4, and we can simply force him back. If white tries a defense with, say, knight to d2, again, we can see the checkmate. So the knight is needed to cover the c1 square. So that cannot be played. White must allow the fork. Bishop to c2, forcing king to c1. I can grab the bishop, uh, excuse me, the knight. Now, king to b1, bishop to h3, locking the king to the first rank, and checkmate can no longer be prevented. So the longest continuation will be bishop to b2, Developing the rook to d8, bishop takes bishop, rook to c2, bishop to c1, rook to d1, after which we get a checkmate. So that won't work. If we take another look at The defense of pawn takes knight on e4. The game may also continue knight to c2 check. And instead of king to d1, black may try king to f2. After which we can grab the rook, bishop recaptures. And now we're up to c1, and we can see that both minor pieces are uh, trapped on the first rank, and at least one of them will be recaptured. If bishop grabs pawn, bishop recaptures, and we can see that not only is the bishop lost, but also the knight is having issues to find a safe square. So if say knight to d2, a4, and I can simply promote. Leaving a winning game for black. Or the knight can escape to a3. Bishop to b2. Now we can see there's only one safe square for um, the knight to go to. b5. Bishop to a6. And we can see there are two squares for uh, the knight to go to. If knight to a7 is played, the knight is lost with a fork. If knight to d6 is played, I can attack uh, the knight with the king. With no safe squares for the knight to go to. e5 in order to. Uh, protect, but bishop can take, knight to e4, bishop to d4 check, and now we can see a, an attack on another minor piece, which is the bishop on f1. So white is in check. And he must move his king out of the defense. So, if say e3 is played, I can simply grab uh, the bishop with check.
so that won't work. And if the king flees to, say, g3, I can grab the minor piece uh, on f1. So that's why this defense will fail as well. White has other defenses as well. So instead of grabbing the knight on e4, White may try bishop takes knight on a3, still covering against the checkmate. But then black may continue with bishop to b4 check. And of course the bishop cannot be recaptured, because if bishop recaptures, there is no longer protection for the c1 square, which lead to checkmate. So white may try knight to d2, after which I can simply wrap the minor piece, check, king to d1, and now king to f7, uh, preparing the rook on h8 for development, and also sacrificing my knight. So if white recaptures the knight, we get rook to uh, d8, and we are threatening a discovered check on the king. So if a random move is played, h3, we simply move the bishop and get our checkmate this way. Of course, we can get the discovered check and attack the rook, so the rook is basically lost. It cannot be moved if rook to b1, say, to escape uh, the attack from the bishop. The same uh, attack will happen bishop to uh, b4 with the checkmate. So the rook is already lost. What white may try is e3 to create an escape square. So we get a discovered check. King flees. We can grab the rook. And at this point, black has a significant material advantage. And white is in a terrible position where we can develop our pieces uh, with check and probably gain even more minor pieces. So if, say, a random move is played like h3, check and we get control of the seven, seven uh, the second rank which is bad for white for white mid try knight to f3 and start developing but again we can come in with a check more checks and we can grab minor pieces so white has to be very careful uh, to develop and he has a lost game at this point. So that's why th that defense won't work. So let's go back after knight takes bishop recaptures. Bishop to b4 check, and then king to d1. We end up with a game similar than the one that was played, simply with knight wave to checkmate. Of course, another defense white may try is to recapture the knight on a3 with the rook. So, after rook takes, black may continue with bishop to b4 check, after which knight to c3 can be played. I can grab the rook, and we can see all of white's pieces are being under attack. So if knight takes e4, bishop recaptures, 
e3, for example, bishop takes, pawn recaptures, black may castle. You can see that white is not in a good position uh, to develop his minor pieces or protect them. And I can simply promote the a pawn. Or alternatively, Knight to d2 can be played after recapturing with the rook. After which I can play knight takes, still threatening the rook. Rook can go to safety to a4. Knight e4, check, threatening mate. So if king to d1 is played, to get out of the check, we can get the checkmate. Or white may try bishop to c3 in order to block, which will simply lead to more pieces. Rook takes, or even bishop takes, check, and white will lose his rook. So, continuation with bishop. And rook recaptures would be, for instance, pawn recaptures knight. I can castle, and again we see the danger uh, white is in with no escape square on uh, f2. If knight blocks, I can simply grab the knight, check, king to d1, and then. Rook can take the minor piece with check. So now white will lose all pieces. Or alternatively, I can play rook to d8 check. King goes to c1. King to c3 check. So immediately hunting for the mate. King to b2, rook to d2 check, king to b1 forced, and finally bishop takes e4 checkmate. And the final defense that was played was knight recaptures knight on a3, so the game continued with bishop to d4 check then king to d1 and checkmate but alternatively bishop to c3 could have been played wasting a minor piece rook takes and we're attacking the knight on a3 now if a random move is played of course, we get the checkmate with rook to c1, double check and mate. Or right could try to recapture the knight, after which I can simply castle. Random move h3, again, rook to c1, checkmate. So, White has to defend the f file. So if knight to f3 is played, we can simply crash through. Um, we can take either knight, depending on your playing style. Let's say rook takes a3 check. If we have a discovered attack on the rook. King to f2, rook takes, and white will be in a lot of trouble. Or you can simply take the other knight, rook takes knight, check, forcing king to d1, 
after which we can continue with checks or grab the minor piece on F1. So let's go with the check. Rook to D8 check. King to C1. Rook to C3 check. King to B2. Rook to D2 check. King to B1. And Bishop to E4 checkmate. Oh, no. Knight to C2. Rook takes. And now it's checkmate the next move. So the most important lesson is not only to spot the sacrifice attack, but also to deploy your pieces in order for it to work. So rook to c8 was the only move that allowed this sacrifice. If I would have played rook to d8, f3, and I crashed through with knight takes, Bishop recaptures, bishop b4 check, bishop recaptures. We can see that I no longer have a mate threat with my rook placed on d8. It was simply after rook to d1 check, king can recapture. And this will lead to a losing game for black. So that's the only defense that white has. That is my misplaced rook on d8. But if we uh, play the same scenario with rook on c8, f3, and I crash through, knight takes, bishop recaptures, bishop to b4 check, and now bishop recaptures. We can see that we have allowed space for our rook to go to c1 for the checkmate. So that's the only difference why the rook has to be developed to c8 and not to d8 or b8. So I hope you enjoyed watching this annotation. Uh, like and subscribe. And best of all, have fun. And I hope you learned something. Have a good evening and see you next time.